Hello boys and girls, I've got a new unboxing video to show you here. It's a two-parter here. This is box one and there's another box on the floor here. Um, this I'm assuming is the box that carries the body. So a little background, I bought this from Robert Albano and he's known as Bob Albano who's done ventriloquism for I don't know many 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 years I don't know how long he's retired now I think he's an English teacher professor anyway he doesn't live in the United States anymore he lives in Taiwan so that makes this figure exotic because yes it came from Taiwan however it's originally from the United States and it was made by a well-known well, I'm going to say ventriloquist figure maker, but he's really known for his sculpting, cartoon painting, illustrations. Um, incredible work this guy's done. Comic stuff. He's done stuff for stamps from the U.S. Postal Service uh, to his stuff's been in museums like this is the Rockwell Museum. His stuff's been in magazines you've heard of, uh, illustration wise. He has some sculpted pieces in museums. But he's also done ventriloquist figures, a small amount. This one's one of them. And I actually reached out to him. His name is Bill Nelson. And I was talking to him about making me a figure. If he likes the idea of what I wanted done and takes on the project, he would do this, the figure, sculpt it, make it, and then he would send it to Dan Lavender who's another ventriloquist, he does illustration as well, great stuff, and incredible figure maker actually. His mechanical uh, animations on the figures are superior, some of the best I've seen out there. He would do the mechanics within the figure, but I didn't pursue that project. Nonetheless, this is all Bill Nelson, mechanics and all that was done on this figure. And you can see it on his website if you go to Bill Nelson Studios, look for his website. This figure is showcased. So I'm going to just open this up. Very excited. And Bob Albano is also known for Robert Albano, whichever name. Um, he's written a few ebooks, hardcover books and whatnot, but he's done a few and stuff on ventriloquism. He has one known as the Pictorial History on Ventriloquism, I believe it's called. Pictorial History of Ventriloquism. He sent me a copy of that. So, what do we got? So I knew about this figure because I had seen it on Bill Nelson's website. And there wasn't that many on there. Oh, oh, this is the head. I thought this would have been the body. I usually like to show the head after. But here's the head. We'll get to this after. I want to do the body first. Okay. Here is the body then. Like I said, all the, way from, all the way from Taiwan. Makes it seem like this figure is exotic. Although, this figure is made in the US. So they, basically, this figure come full circle back home to the United States. Oh, so much popcorn. It's a mega mess. A mess to make, indeed. So, this guy, seen a lot. He's been in Taiwan, so. so right away when I'm looking at the body, and you can see here are the clothes on it. Um, still got popcorn in here. The clothes, uh, it almost looks like a uniform, right? That's because it is, on purpose. Now he doesn't have any shoes on his feet. In the back, if you look inside the opening here, it's a pretty standard type of framed torso. You got the wood on the bottom. I don't know if they'll give you a good look inside here, but it's wood bottom here. It has the hook 
if you want to straddle down the uh, head rod. I know that he made the hands. And Bill Nelson, anything he sculpts, you want to see them because he does such a superior job. Let's see. Hands are important to me. I want good hands. And he's got good hands. They're smaller. But they're nicely made. Look at that. Look at the uh, detail. Nice. Nice detail in the hands. But nice he had made the feet too, but I can't ask for everything. Yeah, here's the body. I, I'd say the body's in reasonable shape. The head's fairly large. What I like about this, this is a definite, this is a 100% Bill Nelson made head with mechanics. Later he stopped doing the mechanics. He, like I said, he goes to Dan Lavender to do it for him. That's been his go-to guy for some time. So it's easy to just get the tape off. You always tear the tape off. You don't use a knife. You don't want to mess up the head. This is the work of art right here. So some of you might look at this and say, I've been waiting to see it all this time, and you'll recognize it because, oh, pieces are coming off. Oh, I think from his ear. His ear, some pieces just came off. So I better hold on to him. Yes, here's the head. Now, Bob acquired this from Bill Nelson directly, so this he's the first owner after Bill Nelson made him, and he doesn't know the exact date, but it's somewhere between like 2006, 2008, somewhere in there. He got this guy, so. Now, this guy was loosely, I guess, based on a character when Bill, uh, Bill made him. Uh, remember the mo movie Music Man from like 1961, 62, around there? Around the time I was born. Um, Ron Howard, you should know him from the Happy Days and well-known film director, he played a character called Winthorpe in that movie, or Winthrop, one of the two. Um, that's, and he was a little kid back then, that's what this character is based on. So that's why you see that uniform on the body. You look at the face, and if you look at Ron Howard back then, um, doesn't per se look like Ron Howard, but I get, you know, Bill Nelson's a creative guy and he's loosely using that as inspiration. And that's what happened here. So let's see if he's still working his mechanics. I'm a little worried here, but okay. So yeah, it looks like uh, the eyes are working. So they're not self-centering. You have to manually do this yourself. And move the eyes back and forth here. What is this? Not move. Oh, it looks like it's for the eyebrows. There it goes. A little. He's an old guy. Well, he's not that old, but he's been through a lot. Here is the mouth. Slot jaw. If you look inside, you can see his tongue is almost could stick out here. I know Bill Nelson has had a figure or two where the tongue comes out. Look at that. Neat, huh? Nice, nice work. Hi! Hello! Hi! Hi! Yay! Alright. I'm gonna have to fix the ear. Super glue. We'll do the job. Hopefully I got enough of the ear still. Fix that. Otherwise, he's holding together fairly well. If you look in the back, so I can see the ear. It looks like I'm not sure, but if you read the back, you can see where it says. Let me touch this so you can see it better. Focus in. It says Nelson. Signed by Nelson. Right there. Can you see it? Nelson part. There you go. And it looks like 2000, it's a 2001, 2004 when he made this. Uh, 
it looks like a four. Then again, it looks like it's a cross. I think it's a four. So I'm assuming this is made in 2004. Sometime a little after that um, is when Bob bought them from Bill Nelson directly. So I am the second owner of this figure. Winthrop, I believe, is the name. Put the body on him. up a little better. So the slot jaw mechanism is a index finger movement. And there's the eyes. You can do either fingers for that or one finger, thumb. Thumb for this. So you can go, hi, how are you? Yes, hi, hi. My name is Winthrop? 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 Well, Doc called me Peter. Peter what? Peter Pan? Uh, Peter Pumpkin Peter. Yes. Yes. So he could look at you? Hopefully. Whoops, not that way. You go the other way to look at me. Like that, right. Oh, your eyes a little. Yes, the eyes. They're kind of funny looking, huh? No, no, funny, just they really move left. They're a little off center. They probably could be fixed inside, but I don't think I'll touch those. Anyway, here he is, one of a kind figure, definitely Bill Nelson. And I'm happy to add him to my collection here and join the group of vents we have in the collection here of my ventriloquism diary. Yes, indeed. Yes. You gonna say bye? No. Why not? Uh, I don't know. I want to say hello. All right, will you say hello? Hello. All right. And goodbye. I found in the head box a pair of sneakers. And I'll have to put some socks on Peter Winthrop's feet. We did have some shoes or sneakers in this case, after all.